Hey everybody, welcome back. Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at ray casting, how we can click on the objects in a scene that we have brought in from Blender. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hop right in here, show you the scene file that I've made in Blender. All right, you can see this is pretty straightforward. We have cone, cube, sphere, Susan, and a torus in somewhat order. Um, you can also see that we've added unique materials to each one of them. They're basic Blender render uh, materials, and you'll see uh, all I have done, the only adjustment I've made is to the center cube. I've uh, set that basically, the specular uh, highlight intensity on that one all the way down to zero oh, on this one. Um, and I am going to edit the JSON file when I export this in order to uh, make it a uh, completely flat shader. All right, uh, so let me go ahead and show you how we're going to be exporting it. Going to go over to our 3.js and the buttons we want to have checked today are going to be, let me hop in here models. All right, so here's our export. Vertices, normals, faces. We don't need the UVs. We're not doing any UV mapping, bones, or skinning, okay? Um, we can turn off, we can disable all of this shading. Morph animations, keep all that stuff disabled. The ones we're going to want to have checked are scene and materials, all right? So once we have that exported, I'm going to hop right over here into our code, and we'll take a look at that. And you can see here it is. Basically, if we go down to the very bottom, you will see that here are our materials, okay? And then our children. So we have our scene right here, and this is basically going to organize everything and put all of our children into an array, and it's going to assign the names of everything, UUID, and then it's going to give us our material, and then turn on Cast Shadow and Receive Shadow, which is nice. I think this was disabled in an older version of uh, Blender, but it's nice that they have it on default as to true this time around. Okay. Um, and... And that's about it. The only thing we I'm, I made a modification onto this file, I added shading, flat shading. Remember, it always defaults to smooth shading, so which looks really, really weird because it triangulates it on a box. So, all right. So without further ado, let's hop over to our index file. Um, you'll see I've made some slight modifications. I added a div class pop up, div class text. Okay, this is gonna we're gonna use this to stick some pop up, uh, basically create a pop up window. Uh, and that's going to stick some information into our scene. So we needed to add this class pop-up and this other class text in order to do so. Okay. And we're just going to use a little bit of jQuery to do that, work that magic. All right. Okay. So moving forward, let's, let's go back to the top of the screen. And you will see that we have called a few couple new items. Mouse, Raycaster, and an empty objects array. Okay, so let's go down to our loader, see what we're doing differently here. We're loading up our entire scene using the object loader, um, adding the object to the scene, and then traversing said scene and pushing all of those objects into an array. Okay. And uh, it's a friend of mine that is asking me about Game of Thrones. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so moving forward. Uh, you'll see that we have two functions that we're calling right now, um, and those are being refer initialized right up top here. Uh, you'll also see that we have a raycaster and a mouse that's being added to the scene. Okay, so raycaster, new three dot raycaster. How does a raycaster work? Okay, essentially what you do in 3D is you take a 3D object and make it into 2D so you can see it on the screen. What the Raycaster does is the exact opposite. It takes your mouse position and puts it into three dimensions by basically shooting a laser, I guess you could see, or a beam of light, whatever you want to call it, um, into your scene and finding all of said intersections. Okay, so what they have done over at 3.js is actually did all the calculations for you, so you don't need to go there and sit, sit there and figure out everything. Okay, the other thing that we need is to assign the mouse as a 2D vector. All right, and then you'll see that we have two functions right here. We have an undocumented mouse down and an undocumented touch start. Uh, reason being is that mouses aren't tracked on cell phones and mobile devices. 
So we have a little function that's going to assist us with that on touch screens. So basically it will call this function whenever it receives a touch from a touch screen. Okay, that way it can track everything. All right, and you can see the way that that works is event touch client puts that into client X and then it calls the event. So basically push it, it basically uh, does the same thing as a mouse, except this is just a little bit of a workaround so that you can use it on a touch screen. Okay, so let's look at our on document mouse down function. Okay, so we're pu pushing through our event, which is basically the position of our mouse. Okay, <clears throat> um, and then what we're doing is we are adjusting it with this little piece of code so that it it the coordinates are in the proper position, okay? Because you have to think that 3.js uses a different coordinate system than um, oh, oh, a web browser would use, okay? So if you think top left to uh, top left to bottom right is the zero, um, zero, um, all the way down and the bottom right is the positive positive, whereas uh, in in most sense, it would be the exact opposite of that or not opposite But be kind of flipped on that so that essentially what you're doing is kind of fixing that little problem right there And then you're using the raycast set from camera and we're gonna stick in that mouse And we're gonna stick in that camera because basically whatever the camera is pointing at Okay, plus the position of the mouse is going to define where that beam is going to be cast, okay? And then what it's going to do is it's going to cause the intersect objects method, okay? And then it's going to f stick in those objects and set that as intersects right here, okay? And then I have just a random math color that I'm assigning right here, okay? And now we'll just look at that, the intersects dot length array, okay? And if, okay, that if it intersects, okay, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, change the color of it. Okay, pretty straightforward. So basically, if you click on an object, it's going to change the color of it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do the call the get hex string. And set it to this dot temp. It's just you know whatever I want. I just felt like calling it this dot temp, um, and then this dot name. Okay, so this is basically going to do create a temporary variable that will enable us to actually take a peek at what color it is uh, using the get get uh, hex string as well as the object name. And then I, what I'm doing is I'm emptying out that text right there uh, just to start it off. So. And then I'm doing a, a pop-up append, and then this is the color, this temp, and then this is the assigned name, Blender Strong. Um, <clears throat> and basically, that's just going to assign it, and then show it in the pop-up. Okay, that way our pop-up changes whenever we click. So let's see how that turns out. Hit refresh on this, and now you can see, whenever I click on any of these, it changes the color, gives me the name of the object, and uh, that's about it. And you see, you can see if I click anywhere else, nothing happens in the pop-up updates. Okay. So, and then this also additionally works on resizing. So we don't have any issues with resizing. So I think this is actually pretty cool. It's on our way into doing um, some more heavy game development. You can definitely see how this is a nice little workflow where now we can start really getting into 3.js and Blender and putting together some, uh, doing some actual video games, basically. Uh, there's a few more things I want to go over before we really delve into it, but after that, I think what we're going to start doing is doing some, uh, building out some entire projects uh, using a whole lot of these features. So in the future, I'm going to look at kind of the physics uh, engine that are built into it as well as a little bit more into shaders specifically on objects uh, and then I think what we'll do is we'll just start building doing some cool projects alright thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe hey.